Where did the apples and corn go? Well, hello there. My name's Detective Taylor. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Mrs. Taylor gave me a call. It appears that there's a mystery that needs to be solved. It's called, dun dun dun, the case of the missing pattern. Hey, do you think you could join me and help me solve my mystery? Great, I could use all the help I can get to help me find all the missing clues. So grab yourself a magnifying glass and let's go searching for those missing clues to help us solve the case of the missing pattern. Before we begin, let's review exactly what a pattern is. There are patterns everywhere. All you have to do is look around and I'm sure that you'll find a pattern. The patterns that we're looking at today are called repeating patterns. Repeated patterns is a pattern that happens over and over again. It repeats itself. So let's begin by taking a look at some repeated patterns that I found around the area. Check out the vertical stripes on the drum. The colors are red, blue, red, blue. That's an example of an AB repeated pattern. There's also an AB pattern on my clothes. This is a referee shirt. We have different vertical stripes. Vertical means that they go up and down. They are black, white, black, white. That creates an AB pattern that is exactly like the pattern we found on the drums. It just uses different colors. When you get the chance, go look in your closet and see if you have any clothes that have patterns on it. Did you know that there are also patterns in music? If you listen really carefully, you might find a pattern found in music. When we're in class, we clap out a pattern to get your attention so you're quiet and ready to listen. Take a look at this pattern. Now you do it. If we put it together, it becomes a pattern that repeats. I repeated that pattern four times. See if you can figure out what pattern is repeating as I stomp, clap, and snap. If you change the beat to a letter, then you can figure out the repeating pattern. Stomping can be A, clapping can be B, and snapping can be C. So what pattern do we have? That's right, A, B, C, C, A, B, C, C, A, B, C, C. Good job, boys and girls. We created a rhythmic pattern. This scarf not only keeps me warm, but it also has a pretty color pattern to it that repeats. It has hot pink, purple, and then a light blue. Hot pink, purple, blue. Hot pink, purple, blue. You get the idea. That there are three colors that repeat is considered an ABC pattern. So it goes ABC, ABC, ABC. I like to group them together so I can figure out the pattern that repeats. When I got married, I got to go to Hawaii for my honeymoon. When we arrived in Hawaii, my husband and I both received a flower lay. This flower lay is not made of real flowers like the one I received there, but it's in a color pattern that repeats. It has yellow, purple, pink. Yellow, purple, pink. Now that pattern sounds very familiar. It's an ABC pattern. What else have I talked about that also has an ABC pattern? That's right, the winter scarf that I was wearing also had an ABC pattern. Sometimes when you take a test on repeating patterns, they ask you to find two different types of patterns that follow the same exact pattern. So my scarf had an ABC pattern, just like this flower lay had an ABC pattern. So they have the same exact repeating pattern. Mrs. West is a teacher that works with me in my school. She's going to show us a special pet that she has that has a repeated pattern. Can you guess what pet that is? Let's see if you're right. Live from somewhere in the United States, it's Miss West with a special snake report. Hello everyone, I'm Miss West and this is my pal Princess. Say hello, Princess. She says hi. Princess is a ball python. She's a rather nice snake, don't you think? She's brown, green, tan, and she has some special markings on her. 
What do you notice? Do you notice a pattern? What's a pattern again? A pattern is a repeated design or recurring sequence. It's an ordered set of numbers, shapes, or other mathematical objects arranged according to a rule. See the shapes on Princess? What shape is that? Is that a pattern? That's right. Back to you, Mrs. Taylor. Thanks so much, Mrs. West, for sharing your snake with us today. I really enjoyed hearing about the patterns that are on your snake. I challenge you to see if you can find other animals in nature that have patterns on them too. Now that you've seen lots of examples of patterns around us, we're ready to solve our mystery. Do you remember in the beginning how the fruit disappeared? Well, we're gonna work together to figure out where that fruit went to. I'm going to give you a picture of a pattern and the pattern has something missing. Use your magnifying glass and use the clues around it to help you figure out what exactly is missing in the pattern. Once you answer that pattern correctly and tell me what's missing, I will provide you with a clue. These clues will be put together to help us figure out where exactly that fruit is. Are you ready to help me solve the mystery? Well, great. Let's begin by grabbing our magnifying glass and searching for those missing patterns. Let's take a look at our first pattern. Look carefully at the hearts. They are different colors. Pause the video and figure out the repeated pattern so you can determine the color of the two missing hearts. Press the play button to check your answer. If you need some more help figuring out the missing pattern, try this. Change the pictures to a letter. Each white heart is an A, each red heart is a B, each black heart is a C. See if that helps you figure out the missing pattern. If you still aren't sure of the missing pattern, here's one more strategy that you can try. I like to put a box around what I think the pattern is. In this case, I used a green box. I see a white, red, black, red group of hearts. Then I check to see if the next part of the pattern is a growing pattern that changes or a repeating pattern. In this case, the pattern stays the same, so it's a repeating pattern. I bet you can figure out the missing hearts in the pattern now. If you decided that we're missing a black and red heart from our repeated pattern, then you are correct. Here's your first clue in the mystery. I discovered large tire tracks in my yard. What could have made those large tire tracks? Let's take a look at our next pattern. Our second pattern looks like a necklace. Look carefully at the beads color pattern to figure out what the missing one is. Which strategy are you going to use to help you figure out the missing pattern? The math strategy that I like to use when I'm trying to figure out the missing pattern is to change each colored bead to a letter. Each red bead is an A, each yellow bead is a B, and each blue bead is a C. Can you figure out what the missing pattern is now? If you said a blue bead was missing from this repeated pattern, then you are correct. This pattern repeats two times. Here's your second clue. We follow the tire tracks down the road. It leads to a large red building. Where do you think that large red building is? What's my missing pattern on this slide? When I take a look at this problem, I notice, first of all, that they're all the same color. But then when I look a little bit closer, I notice that some of the arrows go up and some of the arrows go down. Pause the video and see if you can figure out the missing pattern. Once again, I decided to change my pictures into letters. So each arrow that's going up is an A. Each letter that's going down is a B. So it looks like I have an AAB pattern. Can you figure out the missing arrows now? If you said the first question mark was an arrow that's going up and the second question mark is an arrow that's going down, then you are correct. Since you got that clue correct, you get clue number three. We saw a long line of people waiting by the building. Well, why would there be a long line of people outside the building? Check out this last missing pattern question. It's very unique because this time, instead of pictures, we're using numbers. Can you figure out the missing pattern? Once again, if you can't figure out the missing pattern, change each number to a letter. Each four is an A, each five is a B, each six is a C. So what are the numbers that belong where the question marks are in this repeated pattern? If you said the missing numbers in this repeated pattern were five, six, six, then you are correct. 
Since you answered our last pattern question correctly, you get our final clue. Clue number four. Farmer John met us by his field of crops. He grows tomatoes and cucumbers. I bet you know exactly where the missing corn and apples are now. If you weren't able to visualize where the corn and apples went to, we have put the clues together here in a picture. We have large tire tracks, a big red barn, people standing in line. The crops that we saw were tomatoes and cucumbers, and there are the farmers there waiting to greet us. So, where did the missing apples and corn go to? That's right. The missing apples and corn ended up going to the farm. The farmer was selling them to the community. Have you ever been to a farm to pick up some fresh fruits and vegetables? I love to go every summer to pick up fresh corn and tomatoes. Yum! Wonderful job, everyone. We solved the case. We figured out that the missing fruit was located at the farm. Thanks to you and helping me find all the missing patterns, we were able to solve the mystery. Great job, young detectives. It's time for your math challenge of the day. So grab a piece of paper and something to write with and let's start creating patterns. For today's challenge, you'll also need three other materials. You'll need three different colors of construction paper, some scissors, and some glue. Pause the video, and when you have your supplies, unpause the video, and I'll go over the directions with you. Here's how to make a paper chain. Start off by cutting some strips of paper similar to this size and this length. Then you're going to take one of your strips of paper, mine's yellow, and I'm going to form it into a circle. You can connect it with glue, tape, or in my case, I'm using the stapler. When you're ready to connect your second one, you go in the center, and then you make the same circle. Once again, connect it with your glue stick, tape, or stapler. Continue your pattern until you have the perfect repeated pattern that you would like to share with your teacher and your family members. Here's what my repeated pattern looks like. I started off with yellow, and then I have two pinks, two purples, and then I'm back to yellow again. So I repeat my pattern two times. And I'm getting ready to repeat it again a third time, but I need more construction paper in order to do that. So I would translate this color pattern into a letter pattern. I would give yellow an A, pink a B, and purple a C. So I have A, B, B, C, C. A, B, B, C, C. A. So what would my next one be? That's right, it would be a B, which is pink. I hope that you enjoy creating your paper chains and that you're able to explain to your teacher and to your parents exactly what the repeated pattern is for the colors in your paper chain. Thanks so much for joining Detective Taylor today as you helped her solve the case of the missing repeated pattern. If you liked today's video, make sure to click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet so you don't miss out on a single adventure. Until next week, goodbye!